Hi and welcome to Media Pool. I'm Melissa and in this video I'll be evaluating how my knowledge and skills developed during my final year viral video module. Part 1. Viral Media Theory I will be comparing the viral performance achieved in two videos. The first video is a travel vlog that I created by myself. The second video is an e-learning video which I helped producing as part of a group project. For both videos, Jonah Berger's Steps framework was used to create engaging videos that would hopefully go viral. The idea for my first video, the travel vlog, was to create a compelling destination image of the city Kiel in Germany with the help of the Steps framework. Social currency, Kiel is an unusual place to visit as it's not well known. Therefore, talking about this video will make the viewer seem knowledgeable about traveling and in with the trends. Zilla my dog is the trigger factor of the video. Seeing a dog on a walk, especially a small dog, is likely to remind a person of the video after the initial watch. Zilla also brings in the emotion, as people love seeing animals and videos. They are seen as cute and funny. Public. I made sure my video is highly visible to a wide public by doing extensive promotional work, which I'll come back to later. Practical value. The video offers practical value as it explains what is special about Q. Stories. Scylla acting like the presenter of the video creates an engaging storyline as she describes her favorite places in Kiel from her point of view as a dog. This video reached over 1.1k views on YouTube and over 2k views on Instagram before I took it down from the platform. For the second video, the e-learning video, my group and I also made use of the Steps framework to create an informative and entertaining media text. Social Currency. Our e-learning video explains post-feminism with the help of the TV show Sex in the City. The show is getting a reboot this year. A viewer seems trendy and smart when talking about our video. Triggers of this video include the show Sex in the City and its theme song. As the show is getting a reboot, it's likely for viewers to stumble upon it and be reminded of our video. Emotions. Feminism and gender inequality often evoke highly amplified emotions. Public. The video was shared on the Unistippermental account, which already has an established follower base. Practical value is very important for e-learning videos. Our video explains the complex topic of post-feminism in a digestible way and enhances the understanding of the paper it was based upon. Stories. The video creates a compelling narrative as the male presenter introduces himself as a feminist and then proceeds to explain the topic. This group video reached 257 views on YouTube. The difference of virality achieved by both videos is striking. Even when only considering YouTube views, the travel vlog achieved five times more views than the group video. Since both videos tried to utilize the steps framework, I would argue that the cause for this striking difference is the promotional work. The impact of promotion is as evident as night and day. I created extensive social media plans for both videos according to Kuhn and Lingwell's planning strategy. From smart objectives to determining the style of the social media posts, it is a very thorough approach to social media planning, and I didn't expect this much work to go into it. But looking at the viral performance of both videos, it definitely makes sense, as promotion can make or break the success of a video. For my first video, I reached out to Instagram accounts that are a big following. I was lucky enough that two accounts with over 23k followers all together agreed to give me a shout out by sharing my video. Practically overnight my video blew up and went from 100 to over a thousand views. Unfortunately, the publishing of my group video fell into a difficult time for me. Other university deadlines were coming up and I got ill so I was only able to share the video to family and friends. Drawing on my experience, I'd suggest adding an additional contagious characteristic to Bagger Steps framework. A video can be as interesting and engaging as it wants, it can carry all the contagious characteristics at once. If there's no promotion, the video has no chance to go viral. Unless someone coincidentally clicks on it, enjoys it and shares it. In other words, does the promotion for you. Someone needs to get the ball or the video rolling or it won't go anywhere and most certainly not viral. I would suggest adding an additional P to the Steps framework, P for promotion. From my experience, a combination of top-down and bottom-up strategies are necessary when wanting to achieve virality. I found the Steps framework helpful because it enabled me to gauge what makes videos inherently viral. But if you don't want to leave the reach of your video up to luck, it is essential to have an extensive promotional plan like Kuhn and Lingwell's social media campaign. For the future, I'm planning on creating more videos to further apply my knowledge in a practical way. The more videos I create and evaluate for virality, the easier it will be for me to gauge what people like. This module showed me that I really enjoy social media planning and content creation, so I've decided to pursue a career in social media after graduation. Combining social media planning and the steps framework will come in handy when aiming to create viral media content. Thanks to this module, I feel more than prepared to transfer viral media theory into the practical work environment. Let's go to part two, reflection of leadership styles and teamwork skills. When I was first confronted with having to evaluate and reflect on my group's teamwork, I was worried. I thought, I don't have any positive to say. How am I going to do this? So I decided on rereading Goldman's leadership styles to refresh my memory. Maybe I thought I can elaborate on how good of a leader I was instead. But what I discovered shook me to the core. That might sound like an exaggeration, but I found that I was part of the problem. I always had a rather complicated relationship with group work. In other words, I hated it. I always felt like all the work fell on my shoulders. 
My hate for group work went so far that I missed out on the opportunity of taking some interesting university modules only because they assigned group work. When I reread Goldman's leadership styles in hopes of finding anything to talk about for this video, something immediately caught my eye. I heavily identified with the pace setting leadership style. I always thought of myself as a democratic, authoritative leader, as I strive to work towards a clear vision which, in the university context, is to achieve a high mark, and as I like to make sure to ask for my team members' opinions and ideas when creating something together. Because of this, I had always seen myself as being very good at teamwork. Little did I notice that my lack of trust creeped up on me and led me to resort to a pace-setting leadership style. Two sentences in Goldman's paper opened my eyes. Guidelines for working may be clear in the leader's head, but she does not state them clearly. She expects people to know what to do. And the pace setter either gives no feedback on how people are doing or jumps in to take over when he thinks they're lagging. I became aware that I had subconsciously done this every time I had group work. Pace setting led me to what I considered the biggest issue with group work, having to take over all of the workload. All this time I was resorting in a pace setting leadership style and putting all the workload on myself because I didn't believe the others could produce work up to my standards. I was lacking in trust towards my group members. One of the dysfunctions Lencioni identifies, which is another theory we discussed within this viral video module. This made me reflect on my behavior pattern. I can now see how I shifted from being a democratic authoritative leader that stays a clear goal and incorporates group members' ideas to being a pace setting leader, usually the closer we were getting to the deadline. For example, as a pace setter, the entire workload of the submission plan fell onto me because I didn't trust the others to produce work that was up to my standards. How did I ever expect my team members to help me out and take over some of the work without asking anyone if they wanted to do parts of it in the first place? Looking back, this lack of trust stems from bad experience from previous group projects. But I shouldn't have jumped to conclusions about my new team members' abilities and intentions, since these aren't the same people. I should have given them a chance and asked for help to distribute the workload evenly. This would have taken some stress and pressure off me, made team members feel more in control and potentially led to a better end result. To develop better trust, Lencioni suggests doing some trust exercises with your team, in which team members get to know each other on a more personal level. I find this a little excessive. Giving people the benefit of the doubt and asking for help would be a good start for me. Therefore, I have created a personal action plan for future team projects, which incorporates the authoritative, democratic, affiliative and coaching leadership style, as Goldman highlights that they significantly enhance work atmosphere and performance. For the future I need to work on my lack of trust, so first I should act like an affiliative leader getting to know my team members and their intentions for the group project better. Then I can implement a democratic authoritative leadership style in which I clearly communicate my goal for the project and take team members ideas into account like I've done before. Instead of avoiding accountability and resorting into the pace setting style when I notice that team members are lacking, I should implement the coaching style by holding people accountable, clarifying what is needed and giving constructive feedback. In other words, I should offer guidance instead of taking over the entire task, something I should have done when I wasn't satisfied with the script of our group project, for example. With this action plan, I'm positive that I'm fully prepared to implement different leadership styles and avoid dysfunctions for future group projects. At this point, I would like to highlight something that stood out to me. I was only able to find my own weaknesses and lack of trust and pace setting when working on this reflective video essay. Theoretically, I should have realized that I had these tendencies when first engaging with the literature. However, I was completely unaware maybe because it had been a while since my last group project, but even during the rework, I didn't notice. It took me sitting down and struggling to write the script for this video till it dawned on me. In my experience, just reading about strategies is not enough. Even having to implement them within practical application turned out to be insufficient in helping me improve my leadership and teamwork skills. For me, I can safely say that the most important part in changing my mind on teamwork was creating this video. Only through critical reflection, specifically regarding myself, did I become aware of my own subconscious habits. Teamwork is a life skill. It's not only important in a professional career, but in everyday life. You and your friends want to throw a surprise birthday party for your mutual friend? You will need to work efficiently in a team to organize the party. A leader is part of a team, so leadership skills and teamwork go hand in hand. Leadership styles have significant influence on a group's work atmosphere, which in turn significantly affects the group performance. In my opinion, Gorman's leadership styles, along with Lencini's five dysfunctions of a team, should be taught from an early age to teach efficient teamwork. To my surprise, I am now actually looking forward to a new project within a team, whether it's in a private setting or within my future career in social media, to make use of my action plan and act on my newfound insights, knowing that the theory is nothing without practical experience and practical experience is nothing without critical reflection. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe to Media Pool for more content like this.